forgot what I was getting. I got last week that I wrote about was like people seek to connect with ETs, angels, light beings, um, ancestors, whatever, but you can't work in that realm unless you've worked with your ego first and you have discernment between what those are because the devil is tricky and that's a great opportunity for like a nefarious energy to sort of take oh, yeah. you on a path that you don't totally. want to go on. And I think it's avoidance of the lessons in the 3D when we're just skipping over to different areas and trying to like yeah. outsource whatever information is. So whenever you talk about that, that's one thing I really love about your work is like your ability to talk about the soul and the ego difference. I think my background as a therapist, it's like I work with people with spiritual emergency and kundalini symptoms that they can't contain. I talk to psychics come to me that are taken over by entities that say they're their soul and um, because they've given their power away because they haven't done that inner work. And it's like, I'm cleanup crew. That's like what I do. I work with people with psychotic traits. Um, so I, I'm a huge proponent in the book and everything of like, set the intention to know your true self. Yes. And then it's all, it's all that, um, then you don't have to be scared. Nothing can take you over if your intention is you. I see it like there's like an inner remote control, like what station you're on. Mm -hmm. And if you have station, I'm tired of myself and my life, just give me Archangel Michael where I can start channeling information for everyone to feel good about myself. Like that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And, but if you have your station, like, I understand the point of incarnation is to become a love warrior, a spiritual warrior on such a true level of seeing love in everything as everything with the, that literally penetrating your eyes and like coming through like in that way, then we're so protected. There's no protection. There's nothing that there's no demon that can overturn that because mm -hmm. then we're truly in the energy of love. But I just think there's so much, um, I love the place where psychology and spirituality meet or don't meet. That's what I'm obsessed with because I think there's a lot of therapists that don't understand false light entities in the fourth dimension, mm -hmm. energy cords. Like, and then I think there's a ton of spiritual people that don't understand inflation and deflation and narcissism. And, you know, so I think we can't do both either well unless we're doing both together. Yes. That's just my biased opinion. Can you talk a little bit more? I, this is something I've been actually really interested in lately is like false light. And I think that's this year has been incredible in the way of like false light. So um, can you explain a little bit more about that? False light to me is basically like spiritual bypassing on the astral realm, right? Where you know when you're sitting with me, to me the test, the litmus test is, do I trust this person? If I just lost my child or someone really close to me and I was in the depths of despair, do I trust this person in their body to be a healer, to hold space, to talk to me in this place? If that person's gonna say, it's all meant to be and you just need to get over it and it da 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 da, I don't trust that. I think that's pretty shitty. And there's a lot of people who identify as healers who go into that spiritual persona, which allows room for false light because it's not love, it's avoidance. And my first book, Authentic Intuition, was really like, what's the difference between projection and intuition? That's kind of what Meet Your Soul was also an expansion of because when you're in a projection, you think something's really real. You're like, I know this is true. I know it. I know that's a bad person. I, you know, or whatever. I know God hates gay people, right? It's like the, the, the feeling of somebody in a neurosis like that who thinks they've heard from God and thinks that's what God is, which is hate and separation, right? But when you're in an intuition, you also like, I know this. I've never known anything. You say the same stuff. So what is the difference between when someone's in an illusion, a false light, it could be on the fourth dimension of false light illusion or a 3D illusion, which is just like a psychological projection versus like a download or a true soul experience. And energetically, they look very different. And one difference is True love has no interest in con control or manipulation. I have no interest in people thinking I'm a guru. Like it's boring to me. When people start to do that, I actually like really shut yeah. it down mm -hmm. because I know what that feels like. I know what projection is. I know it's a lie. I know it's pointless. It's a waste of everyone's energy. It blocks them from themselves. Um, some people seek that. 
Some people get hits off just kind of running because they can't feel their own soul or their own grounding cords. They're just little vacuum cleaners <laughs> for energy hits of sustaining their energy through some kind of narcissistic. What's the word? I forget what's the narcissistic. There's like a, a word for that mm. um, sucking feeling. I'm sure we all have experienced Succubus. the feeling of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I think on the fourth dimension, it looks like, and I've had experiences myself. It's like, that's why I would never trust a shaman who's like, there's no such thing as the dark. Cause it's like, no, if, right. if, if you don't understand where and how that is to me, love is like, ultimately, yeah, it's not true. Right. Like ultimately only love is real, but there's also dimensions mm -hmm. in the 3d and this dimension evil is real here. It's like, you just have to look at my background's working with incest survivors, uh, gang members, you know, like in addiction centers, like we have a lot of abuse and trauma on this planet that comes from evil. Does that mean that ultimately that's the most true? No, but to deny that, I think does a real disservice to anyone who's doing true healing and to victims, right? Mm -hmm. So we know what spiritual vi bypassing is on the 3D when someone's like, basically like, see no evil, see no evil, you know, in their lives and others. And it's the same on the fourth dimension, which is kind of where astral travel, remote viewing is, where there's more of like, it's all good in that dimension too. And I speak with the other side in sessions. I'm a medium as well. So it's like, a lot of it has to do with, you definitely don't want to set an intention of fear, you know, because fear attracts fear. So it's, never go out seeking into another dimension if you're kind of paranoid because that's not going to go well. But at the same time, it's kind of like knowing what neighborhoods you can walk in on the street, right? It's like I used to live in the mission in San Francisco. I get off work at three in the morning because I worked on a suicide line and I would walk down the middle street because there was just like real stuff happening that could attack me on the streets. So you have to know what it, your street sense, your street smarts. And I think that's true spiritually as well. Ultimately, it's like, don't let fear control you. I, it's funny because I think we've gone in so deep quick. Usually I don't start with like, what is the soul? Let's go to false light. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> there's a lot that usually comes from that point to that point. But I also love just staying with what's happening and alive and real. And my guess is there's a lot of listeners that are ready to handle this conversation. But for anybody who might be listening, who's like terrified right now, just know that as long as you connect to your soul and just keep it basic and easy, you never have to go into psychic realms if you don't want to. You never have to, you can just make your life better by just making your intuition a little louder, giving your intuition the microphone in a way that's really like a planned thing. Like, okay, for 10 minutes a day, I'm just gonna amplify that part of myself because God knows we have the other parts of ourselves in our ear where, that say we're not enough all day long. So I just want to balance those voices out a little bit for people. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.